Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're back with an opinion video and this is coming directly from my Patreons who on Discord have started giving opinions on what videos and topics they wanna to see. And this is based on the best gear. So we've all seen this in any sort of thing in photography uh, and probably other hobbies or professions, but people get a body or a camera and first thing they wanna know is, what is the best lens? And the best lens is always one that someone else is recommending or the MTF chart or the bokeh or anything like that. And all these results are usually something that's uh, basically tangible. You can see a chart, you can see it visually, you can feel it or whatever it is and notice it. You can actually say, oh, this lens is sharper, this one's less sharp, this one has more vignetting, this one has less, this one has more flares, this one has less. But that what happens with that is there's this cycle, vicious cycle that repeats itself where when people ask, people recommend, people buy, people buy, people recommend, people ask, and it just keeps on, on going. And what happens is we end up with camera systems or photography systems that have really hyped items and really low valued items. For that, I was picking up the Mamiya and the Mamiya RZ67 is a system that is probably my favorite medium format system ever made. I, I'm a big fan of Mamiya, but the RZ is a portrait beast. Like it's so good with the bellows and so on. But everybody always levitates nowadays to the 110 f2.8. Why? Because it's 2.8 and who doesn't want a 2.8 lens on medium format? But the thing is, the 140 that I have here, the 180 millimeter, were really, really good lenses back in the day and they still are. If you check the work of people like Herb Britt, or Her Herb Ritz and other photographers, Annie Leibovitch, they usually shot on the 140, 150, 180 millimeters. They usually didn't shoot a lot on the 110. And that is why people just now recommend the 110 is probably better on charts and things like that, but the rendition is not all, it's more about the feeling, the compression, things like that. And what happens is, like I said, people recommend and it goes in cycles. So we inflate the prices of the lenses, like the 110 for the RZ now is $700, something like that in 2022, uh, when the 140 maybe is 250, 350, and this is just as good if not better. And this is a 4.5 lens, which yes, you need more light, but usually you should be shooting with strobes or maybe natural light and have enough light. And also I highly recommend you don't shoot at 2.8 on the 110. But what I'm saying is we end up with less variety on the people's work. People shoot only on the 110, maybe the 90 if they can't afford the 110. And it's just continuously the same cycle. We don't see exciting things, people testing things and so on. It happens the same with the Mamiya 7. It's not so obvious, but people do the 75, I mean 80 or the 7, uh, 65 and continuously shoot. And same thing happens with some other lenses. But there are lenses out there that are uh, evoke different feelings, evoke different aspects and looks to your images, which are not technically perfect, but are very good, if not better. And a lot of the times, the better part of the best part of a photography or a picture is not the lens that you chose, that the MTF chart is really good, that the bricks look really straight and so on. But what you did with that photo, the light, the subject, the focus, the framing, all of that is really good. But the problem is those things are not so tangible. You kind of have to be good, perfect your craft. You have to keep on working for it you usually are gonna be the best part of your picture taking, not the lens, not the body. That's the thing that we always see when we get a professional photographer and hand them instead of a RZ67 with the 110 or the 140 or whatever, we give them a shitty camera. They still make amazing work. Why is that? Because they are good at their craft. The lens, the body are not gonna be the most critical thing. So for example, I picked up here at work a very, very shitty lens that supposedly is less than 50 euros and I put it on a 29 euro lens body and I shot a roll here in the snow in Finland. This lens is supposed to be hazy, have some dust inside and pretty bad and only works with the Canon old bodies, the Canon 620s, 650s and so on. Well, this lens rendered beautifully. I'm very happy with the results. I'm so tempted that I'm actually gonna probably buy the lens and shoot and show you guys what a sub 100 euro full frame kit can do without going for the, you know, 
Canon L glass or anything like that. Let me pick up the lens. So this Canon 620 with the Sigma 90 mm 2.8, and like I said, the Sigma doesn't work on the more modern Canon EF lens uh, bodies, but this is probably a awesome lens. And one thing that also happens when you go for the best is you end up getting scared sometimes of taking your equipment out. If I would have bought the best lens for the Canon uh, body, and I would have bought, let's say this is a 90 macro, the 110, uh, 100 millimeter 2.8 L macro, it's a 800, 900 euro lens, and took it out on a snowy day like I did with this, I might have been scared. I took it through a nicely slope, and I would have been scared of dropping it, slipping, falling, and so on. But this lens, because it actually has trash value, it basically means I'll take it to more places, I'll shoot it in more uh, situations, which will end up giving me better work because there'll be work. So yeah, I, my, this video opinion is a bit about like when people get into a system and they ask for the best, maybe they should just settle with what they can buy at the beginning. Of course, there's duds in photography. You don't wanna get really, really, really bad lenses because sometimes maybe that will be a limiting factor, but I've seen work with kit lenses with the Canons that is superb. So don't always concentrate on the best. And also what the best is for you is not gonna be for the other person. And yes, we can all read charts, we can all look at specs, we can all see forums and videos and blog posts about you know walls and whatnot. But at the end, what affordable like gear you can use and enjoy. And this kit, like I said, is under 100 euros you can buy 200 euros worth of film and developing and just shoot and shoot and shoot and enjoy. And you'll have more keepers than if you bought that L series glass that is a thousand and you probably would have shot two rolls for the same price or less than if I shot 300 you know, shots or more with this camera. So yeah, today it was more about what is the best gear and how that limits us and we should just enjoy shooting. Of course, like I said, there's different grades. Medium format cameras, pretty much all are superb. They were professional choices, so there's not such a thing as a really bad medium format lens. 35 millimeter was more amateur, hobbyist, and so on, serious hobbyist, so there is some bad lenses, but like I said, this Sigma uh, 90 mil macro AF is actually pretty decent, and if you just put it on one of these bodies, it just focuses. That's how long it took to focus onto the camera. I mean, I'm sorry to say, but I'm keeping this camera, this lens combo to just take. This is better than a point and shoot most times, except for the lack of flash. But yeah, that's been the opinion video. Let me know if you've ever been uh, one of those that searches for the best on something and ended up not really enjoying the search of the best or not liking the best gear. I'm for sure one that's been looking for the best when I was in, you know, shooting digital cameras full frame or sometimes getting into different systems like large format. And then I realized that just having something to go shoot is actually more important than having technically the best lens. And I, there's a lot of best lenses that I bought and never used because they were just too valuable or too big or bulky. So yeah, thanks for uh, watching guys. Let me know what you think. And also those Patreons that can go and give, uh, you know, feedback on what videos they want on opinion. There's a Discord server. Let me know if you're a Patreon and you haven't been on it you can go join and you can talk there and let me know what you wanna listen about. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Like I said, this video is sponsored basically by Patreons and PayPal donations, I'll leave the links below. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one, bye.